Hello and welcome to Low Impact Development class. My name is Thomas Sorens and I'll be your host for these proceedings. I'm really excited about this class and I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you all, seeing what you all come up with with your projects and interacting with you. Uh, this first lecture today is just to go through an introduction to the course, a brief introduction to low impact development and I'll walk through the syllabus and tell you about the specifics of the class. Uh, I'm looking at the syllabus right now. Uh, my information is on there. My full-time gig these days is actually at Messiah College in Pennsylvania. Uh, I moved here to be work with uh, undergraduate students on projects in developing countries through an organization we call the Collaboratory. We currently have over 200 students working on over 40 projects with uh, 40 professionals in 17 countries. So that's one of my passions, but another one of my passions is this course, and this material, and I'm real excited to, as I said, to be part of it and that the University of Arkansas allows me to, to work with you all on this. I was at the University of Arkansas for 17 years, and I'm still on the faculty there as, as an adjunct. So my information is on the syllabus. You can contact me through my University of Arkansas email. I do have that open on my desktop most of the time, and and I keep up with that. If you call me, you can call me at my Messiah College phone number, which is on the syllabus there. If you mail something to me, mail it to uh, me at Messiah College. If you mail it to the MSC program or the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Arkansas, it will get to me, but it's got to make a stop there, and they got to put it in. And, and, send it to me. So uh, let me, first of all, I think before I get into the details of, of the course and the materials, let me talk a little bit about low impact development and what we're talking about, and then we'll go back to the, the syllabus. So low impact development, it's a stormwater management strategy. So it's a very general sounding word, but it, it's we're dealing specifically with stormwater. We will have a lecture later on, a recorded lecture from a few years ago uh, from uh, with low wait L E E D lead. So it fits in with green engineering, but it's not so much about the structures; it's about the the stormwater management. And the objective of it is to develop a site so that the hydrology after development matches the natural condition as closely as possible. So that's the objective for low impact development is to try to have less impact, low impact, on the hydrology running off the site and on the natural system. It fits with ecological engineering where we try to do the engineering that's uh, ecologically sound that fits the natural system. I'm actually a, a member of the American Ecological Engineering Society and I'm a certified ecological design associate. It's fairly new certification. Uh, Marty Matlock at the University of Arkansas is also a certified ecological designer. But what we try to do is we try to fit the development with the ecological system. So why do we do low impact development? There are some economic reasons. This is from the North Carolina people, the low impact development people. So they point out there are some economic benefits to it. I did, I worked for Walmart some years back on, on their sustainable sites initiative and they kept pushing that it has to pencil out that the the low impact changes have to have some economic benefit to them. So you can, it can save you money in several places, reusing the water, that was my focus as part of that team, saves money on water. So it can have some economic benefit. That's not usually the primary reason they do it, but it can be economical, okay. Uh, one of the main objectives is to control flooding. So if we manage the stormwater correctly, we will have less flooding. Flooding is natural, but after development, it's worse. It has worse consequences. And also, when you've developed, 
then you're more vulnerable to the flooding. You have structures in the places where it floods. So it can have a benefit on that. And follow along with that, prevent erosion. Erosion is one of the big issues that, one of the big reasons why we do this. Erosion both messes up the land and causes water quality problems with the siltation and with the turbidity in the water. Public perception. Uh, it, it's good public relations to do low impact development. You can advertise it uh, like LEED certification. It's something that you can kind of put a feather in your cap and say, hey, look at what we did. We're, we're good citizens here. We're good neighbors. And it can have a lot of good benefits that way. It also tends to look better if you try to match the natural system. It, you can have more attractive development. And of course, the low impact we lessen the impact on the environment. And this is the right thing to do. If we can develop it in a way that we match the natural system, it's the right thing to do. And in addition to being the right thing to do, in many places it's the law. When I first started teaching this class, I could say, for example, well, volume controls might be uh, coming someday. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but the state of Pennsylvania, it was had been the law while I was teaching that in Arkansas. So in many places it is the law. The uh, I have a list here. Puget Sound, LID is required for anything that gets an NPDES permit. New York, new construction. And MS4s, you have to have LID, Orange County, California. And actually, I have a little list here. This is from a low impact from EPA, actually. This maybe let me click it. This lists some example ordinances around the country that are essentially low impact development ordinances. So for non-point source runoff, there is. All these, Portland, Napa, California, uh, Nebraska, Virginia, Maryland. So, in addition to being the right thing to do, it's also the law in many places. And, and the regulations, if where you're working is not there yet, it's probably coming that there's, there's an ordinances that what we now call low impact development is kind of a special thing is actually just going to be development okay so let me walk through the syllabus a little bit here and then i'll get you guys started and go find the resources that i talk about there is no required textbook for the class what i encourage you to do is find a document a guidance document for maybe your local authority or where you want to do your project, the project is a big part of the class, or another location of interest. Some uh, good ones are the uh, North Carolina guidebook is a good one. Actually, when I first started teaching this class, I used that as my textbook, so to speak. Uh, the link is on the syllabus there. You can Google it. You can uh, get that document there. They also have some spreadsheet software that does volume calculations. A lot of that now is in the EPA stormwater tool that I'll talk about in a minute here. So that's a good one. North Carolina. One that I really like is the uh, that's very well done and pretty uh, widely used is the Puget Sound. That document is available, 365 pages. It's available online for free. And it's a good one. It's also, uh, it's very visual, which I like. It's got a lot of good graphics, a lot of good design principles, as well as detailed design specifications. So that's a good one. And so to look around, you can find uh, documents again if you can find one for 
where you're working or where you want to do your project. That's good. There are a couple of websites out there, general websites, that have some some stuff. LIDStormwater.net is, is a good one. There's some resources there. Lowimpactdevelopment.org The Low Impact Design Center Low Impact Development Center That's another good one for resources. Okay, the software, we, we ask you to use some software. I say we because in the MSE program for all the classes we like to the students to uh, use some modern software. Uh, I found in the last few years that the students really like using the EPA's National Stormwater Calculator. Again, the link is on there. That it estimates the annual amount of rainwater frequency of runoff. It does not give you uh, hydrographs, as far as I can tell. If I, but it it has a lot of stuff built in. I think it has a the soil maps or links to the soil maps built in and it's a uh, it you can put in in the software these different best management practices BMPs and uh, it's it's also very visual very easy to use it does not give you like I said hydrographs or or the does it give you I think it just gives you the, the amounts it doesn't give you the peak so you probably want to use for the hydrology for your site the, the NRCS method, which we'll talk through. I don't know your background on hydrology, so we are going to go back through some basic hydrology. So if you haven't had it, uh, we'll learn it. If you have had it, we'll have a little review on it. The We'll use the, and most LID procedures use the SCS method or the NRCS method, the NRCS the wait, SCS became the NRCS. That's why we have two names floating around for the same method. There's a link on there. There's software for that that's available online free. So you can download that from the Natural Resources Conservation Service, NRCS. The TR-55 was their original document on the, on the method, and so the software for it is called WinTR-55. And you can install that for free. That's pretty easy to use. There's also some uh, tutorials out there, some YouTube videos that are very good in helping you learn it. I used to require that the students use the EPA SWIM model. And this still has, it's a lot of this has been incorporated into the EPA stormwater management program. But some, th some parts of it, I think this will spit out some hydrographs for you. So... That's a little more learning curve. It's not that bad than uh, stormwater management tools. So that might be something useful for you. And there are other things out there. There's probably, uh, I'm recording this right now in the fall of 2016 for the fall of 2016 session. There are probably some new stuff out there that, that, that I don't know about. And also like one of the students had, was working in Chicago and he used a spreadsheet program that the city of Chicago used for low-impact development. So you can do that. And actually, I could send that to you. I think he gave me permission to send that to you if you want that. But uh, So there's some other tools out there. If you're wondering if it's appropriate for your project, run it by me. But those are, those are the basics. The, uh, like I said, the stormwater calculator and the wind TR-55 is what most students end up using. I've referenced a couple books on the syllabus there. Again, they're not required, but they might be good to have. The first one is from the University of Arkansas Community Design Center. It's called Low Impact Development, a Design Manual for Urban Areas. And it's a design manual, but really it's more uh, visual and conceptual. It's got some excellent photos and then diagrams that go along with the, the photos like that. And... Uh, it might be a resource you'd like to have. Very visual. You can try to track that down, Google around. Again, University of Arkansas Community Design Center. 
CDC. And if you can't track it down, contact me and I'll, I'll see if we can get you some copies. I think I remember it was about 30 bucks. I could be wrong on that. There's a textbook, a low impact design textbook by Thomas Cahill. It's a uh, low impact development, sustainable stormwater management. It's intended to be a, a textbook for a, like a course like this, but I didn't choose this as a textbook. It's not uh, exactly what I was looking for, but it has a lot of stuff that we're talking about. Uh, LID design calculations and methodology. That's the, basically the NRCS method hydrology and applied to, to LID. Stormwater calculation process. That it's actually the state of Pennsylvania process. Thomas Cahill works in Philadelphia and actually he was on the uh, Walmart task force that I was on. So that might be interest for you. Again, I didn't choose it as a textbook for the class. I also put on there a reference to a hydrology textbook. If you don't have one, you might want to get one. Uh, you know, everything's online, as we always say, but the the, uh, the one I use for class, for hydrology class, is Richard McEwen's Hydrologic Analysis and Design. It's pretty good. It's uh, a lot of stuff you don't, it's thick, you don't, you won't need for the class, but it does have some of the basics you will need. And Richard McEwen, he also wrote the, the Federal Highway Hydrology Manual, and so I have the link onto that. That's available free. And that document that I have linked on there is, uh, if you go to the, that takes you to the website, that link on there, and then you can download, see the information there, and you can download the federal 426 page highway hydrology and this, to be honest, is pretty much the exact same thing as the book. I do use the book for class because it's got, it has homework problems and it's organized a little better, a little easier to follow. But that's another reference you can get. You can get that for free. And like I said, it's pretty much the same thing as the book. Except that it's free. PDF online. Okay, so... The objectives of the class, or the objective, is to understand the purposes and aspects of low impact design and to apply low impact design principles to stormwater management and site development. The grading, it really comes down to your project. It says 50% assignments and quizzes. Those are all follow along things you follow along the video. So you can just send me an uh, email, let me know where you're at, which ones you've done. They're not really graded because, like I said, you do it along with the video. So it comes down to the, the project. So what the project is, is you choose a property to develop or redevelop using LID principles. It can be a real, well, it should be a real property because you got to get soil maps and things like that. Could be something that you're working on for work. Could be something you have a personal interest. Could be your house. I've had students do their own, own property. So you choose a property, you choose size and place LID BMPs as best management practices on the site. By best management practices, I'll, uh, I'll jump out here. This is uh, what's going on with LID. It's kind of part of the intro here, but I pulled this up. I'm part of a ASCE LID committee. I'm not really... I'm not active in it as all, at all, so I'm kind of a lurker at this point. But I am on this committee, and I do keep up with their what they do. And you can see what they're working on is stuff like pervious pavements, LID model ordinance. So they're they're working on an ordinance that other people can, can other municipalities can take and use it as their own or adapt to their own green streets, computation methods. So they're working on software so that's when I uh, that's what I was thinking of when I said you there might be stuff in development out there rainwater harvesting something I've worked on a little bit bioswales LID 
and impacts on interaction with combined sewer overflows in urban areas, bioretention, soil enhancements. So that's some of the things going on in the uh, low impact development world. And those are some of the technologies or things you can use for your project. So you're going to uh, choose a property, do hydrologic analysis on the site. The components of the project, you document what guidelines you used, what procedure you used, what regulations you were, you were aiming at, uh, the software that we talked about, and then in your report you'll tabulate pre-development and post-development and or post-development with LID, Low Impact Development. And so a lot of times you'll have, students will have two scenarios, pre-development, and then with the low impact de design. Sometimes you want to do the, the pre-development and then post-development, especially if it's an existing site, the way it is now with like lots of pavement, a lot of pavements that's not disconnected, and then show what you can do by putting in LID. So you might have three scenarios there. LID, you're trying to match the pre-development. So you want to estimate the pre-development and then try to match it with LED. So you might, it's either two or three scenarios that you you uh, put in there, your report there. So you document the curve numbers, so that's for the SCS or NRCS method, the time of concentration, flow rates, water volume balances, and document that all. And then also discuss the water quality effects. So we're mostly dealing with water quantity, but we're concerned about water quality. So most of the LID methods, they address water quality, water quality qualitatively, but that should be addressed in your report. Okay, so what we're going to do in the course, we're in number one right now, going th through it, and then your assignment for this is to obtain the documents that you want and, and software, try to get it and install it. If you have problems, uh, let me know if you're a Mac person. I think you get, there's got to be some workarounds on some of that software. So obtain documents in the software. The next lecture will be uh, on the definitions. There's a, a document called the LID. What's it called? I think it's just called definitions or something like that. But that'll be the next lecture. And then we'll go through the technologies. So the way we're doing it here is I'm going to kind of introduce the end product, the details, the LID technologies, and then we're going to jump back. And I have some pre-recorded videos from a few years ago that I'm, I'm going to put in here. Also, one with a good one from Marty Matlock at the University of Arkansas, talking about some of his work, and then Karen Stewart on LED. And then after we kind of go in the details and some of the applications, and we have several fill-in-the-blank documents that you'll use those. Watch some the Pennsylvania stormwater videos it's from the city of uh, Philadelphia mostly. There's some real, they've produced some really great videos that show you stuff. Then we're going to go back and build the science on it. So we'll build the hydrology on it. Talk a little bit about the flow in the streams. Open channel flow is, and stream morphology. That's a uh, a lot of students find that like the most interesting part of the course. It's, it is pretty interesting. I have a uh, video, Matt Van Epps, again from Arkansas. He has a company that does stream restoration. Uh, he was a guest speaker in class some years back, and I re recorded that, and I'll, I'll put that in there. And a little more of the science. Then we'll, uh, sorry for that noise. The, uh, and then we'll go through applications. I have again some recorded guest lectures and then I'll do some uh, rain garden exercise, do a walk around on campus here, show you some LID stuff we've done here at Messiah College. And then I have available some student presentations from the past on video. So that's how the course is working. If you have any questions, let me know. And again, I'm real excited about the class. I'm looking forward to interacting with you 
and get busy on tracking down the documents you want and installing the software. And I'll see you next time.